brought to you by Sunbeam, the best electric appliances made. Announcing new, the all-new Sunbeam Dual Deluxe Vacuum Cleaner, America's newest, most powerful home cleaner to give you the best on-the-floor cleaning and above-the-floor cleaning. Now, let's all play What's My Line? Now, let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. And now, the award-winning actor who is dazzling audiences everywhere with his comedy performance in Happy Anniversary. Happy David Niven. You know, this show has been on the air for 10 years now, and it's always been a mystery to me how the regular members of the panel, year after year and week after week, can think up witty and charming introductions for each other. I've been on it six times, and I've run dry. It's not, it's not that I dislike them, I love them, but lovely, beautiful, my chum, Dorothy Kilgallen. <laughs> David, you'll never hurt a girl's feelings by saying anything like that. You haven't run dry at all. And now it's my pleasure to introduce the author of a book that's on all the bestseller lists. The book is called The Laughs on Me, and the author is our panelist, Bennett Sir. Here's a very distinguished panel moderator who's off tomorrow to Paris to cover the NATO conference and meet the president when he arrives in the French capital, Mr. John Charles Daly. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line, and how nice to have David Niven on the program with us. Mostly because we anticipate we'll give him a rough half hour, I must admit. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the show, and we'll meet our first challenger after this. Let's meet our first challenger. Would you come in and sign in, please? <laughs> Perry Ann Connerly, is that right? Miss or Mrs. 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 Connolly, where are you from, Mrs. Connolly? Clarksdale, Mississippi. Clarksdale, Mississippi. Well, for heaven's sake, what do you know about that? Oh, please, everybody. Well, there's one thing let out of the bag before we even get to our seats. It is indeed Charlie Connolly's wife. Now, you just have your troubles beginning. See, you know that it's the famous Charlie Connolly's wife. And Mrs. Connolly, may I present my distinguished colleagues on the panel? Distinguished colleagues on the panel, may I present Mrs. Connolly? Yes, thank you. Will you join me over here, please? Mrs. Connolly, are you familiar with our scorekeeping system? Yes. That's good. And in that event, we'll let the audience in the theater and the folks who are looking in at home know exactly what your line is. All right, panel, we will tell you that Mrs. Connolly is salary. Yes, Dorothy. Uh, John, I just want to say for the record, that I have met Mrs. Connerly, but I really don't know what she does. I didn't know she did anything except get breakfast for Charlie Connerly. Now, do you want me to disqualify myself or not? Well, actually, what we're here to do tonight, really, is to find out what she gives Charlie for breakfast, because I want to be able to play football that way. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, darling, that's fine, because this is why Perry Ann is here. She has an occupation all of her own, and you have to determine what it is. We will okay. tell you that Perry Ann is salaried, and we'll begin the general questioning with... Uh, Bennett, sir. Mrs. Connolly, I, I want to say before we start, your husband's the best quarterback I ever saw in action. Thank yes, you. Sir. Yes. And um, now to get on to you. Uh, do you use your brains for the job that you do? Yes. Uh, do you work for a non-profit making organization? No. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Francis. I like to think about Charlie Connolly's marvelous passes and that he made them first at you. <laughs> uh, 
a boy never could have had a better start. Is all I can say. <laughs> well, now, uh, are your services for both men and women, Mrs. Connolly? Yes. Is there any product whatsoever involved with what you do? No. That two down and eight to go, Mr. Niven. I, I'm in the same boat as Dorothy. I've had the great pleasure, too, of meeting. Um, do you wear a special... I don't know anything, by the way. Do you wear a special outfit for your job? No. That's three down and seven to go. You proved it, David. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> now we will have uh, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, Mrs. Carley, could children take advantage of what you do? Yes. They could. Mm -hmm. Uh... Are there men as well as women doing what you do? Yes. Are there more men than women doing what you do? Yes. Can you do it in Mississippi as well as in New York? Yes. I don't suppose you'd care to say where you do it. Does it? No. Uh, do you move about in your work? A little. Yes, a little. I could... Do you use your hands? Yes. Would you say you worked with your hands? quite a good deal. Yes. Do you work on anything that has moving parts? Yes. Would it be called in any sense a machine? Yes. Uh, is it bigger than a typewriter? No. That's four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. No. It's not bigger than a typewriter. Mrs. Connolly, is it used in the house? The machine uh, that you work on? The machine. Uh, the machine. Yes. Would it be used in any particular part of the house rather than all over the house? Well, I would... yeah, there are some parts of the house where it would not be used. <laughs> 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 well, I think Miss Bennett said all over the house she gets a no. Five down, five to go, Miss Preston. If it's what I think it is, I think some of the best work has been done in that room. <laughs> Do well, you actually, write I at think, all? Claire, this would not normally be used in the kitchen, which is what I think. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> would one consider that you use your talents as a writer in any way, Mrs. Connolly? Yes. And is the machine that is not bigger than a typewriter a typewriter? That's right. And uh, is the work that you do on the typewriter uh, of benefit to other people than yourself? Yes. <laughs> Does it have anything whatsoever to do with publicizing other people than yourself? Yes. It could. Not to miss him. It could have that effect, oh. yes. Oh, no, well, yeah. I was thinking of uh, publicity. Do you do, have anything whatsoever to do with publicity? You mean directly writing publicity or disseminating publicity or in acting a as a publicist? In a, I wondered if Mrs. Connolly wrote a column of any kind in which well, she Well, yes, she writes a column, so I'm flipping all the time. <laughs> You know, this is fascinating because I know Dorothy probably will say, well, of course, because you, I've read item, you know, read stories about Perry Ann preparing her column. Actually, she goes to see Toot Shaw and she listens to everything Toot Shaw says and then writes the opposite and she has a <laughs> reputation for getting a lot of things right. See? <laughs> makes it literate. Yeah, it makes it literate. <laughs> Actually, Perry Ann's been writing a column for three years for the North American newspaper line. I remembered what it was I halfway think... around and I was dying to be clever, you know, and it never came back to me at all. I'm sorry, David. <laughs> Well, David, what you do in that case is you start kicking shins to the right and left. You yeah. see, you distract the other panel members and they get him. Well, that good husband of yours did it again today. He played a wonderful game of football. Where is he? Thank you. He was around here somewhere a while ago. Is oh, he in the theater? Hey, Charlie! Hey! Connolly, may I introduce Mr. Connolly? How do you do? Hello, there we are. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, how wonderful to have you with us. Thank you, John. It's a pleasure to be here. And I might say that, uh, again, because I got tomorrow morning's papers as I was coming over, and I hope this doesn't make you blush, but Charlie today was given the Jim Thorpe Award as the outstanding football player in the professional football field in these United States, and never was a, an award won so clearly and beautifully by any man.
notice you were pretty careful with her, Mr. Daly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've sat around with Perry Ann and Charlie and, and Toot Shaw, who's, of course, the greatest sportsman that ever came down the line, and I have a healthy respect for Charlie's right arm. He just slapped me casually on the shoulder one night, and I couldn't use the shoulder for three days. <laughs> so I was very tender. Now I'll not be tender anymore. Can we have another contestant, please? Would you come in and sign in? Right there. Oh, you'll be tender. <laughs> <laughs> Sandy? Tackett, is that right? <laughs> is it uh, Miss or Mrs. Tackett? Miss. Miss Tackett, where are you from, Miss Tackett? Wellington, Kansas. Wellington, Kansas. How oh, nice to have you with us. Miss Tackett, may I present the panel? Panel, Miss Very Tackett, would you join nice me over here? What'd you say? Very nice fans of mine. Yes, they are, actually. They're pretty <laughs> they good are. types. When you get... Would you, uh, you... Do you know how we keep score, Miss yes, Tackett? Yes, All right, fine. If you will sit down, then, we will tell the folks in the audience here in the theater and those at home what your line is. We'll go back to the beginning again. Miss Tackett is self-employed, and we'll begin the general questioning with David Nibbin. <laughs> Miss Tackett, do you work above the ground? Yes, I do. Definitely. <laughs> well, that establishes it. This is not a mole keeper or something like that. <laughs> do you work out of doors? Yes. Well, that's very good. Uh, all year round? No, not. That uh, kind of wraps That's it up, I'm it? afraid, that all oh. year round. Yes, I'm very oh. One down and I go over Kansas, you know. It gets cold down there. Oh, but I, uh, there was method in my madness. I'll tell you if he comes around again. Self-employed? Well, of course, she can go indoors whenever she feels like it. Um, well, you work part of the time outdoors and above the ground. Um, is there a product involved in what you do? Yes, there is. Can both men and women use this product? Yes. Is it useful rather than purely luxurious? Yes, it is useful more, rather than purely luxurious, and I would say that it's incidental to the service, actually. Uh -huh. uh, in the course of this service, Miss Tackett, do you come in contact with people? Yes. Do you talk to them? Oh, yes. Do they talk back to you? Yes. Do you give them anything? You mean uh, exclusive of the service? I thought she might hand them a little something. <laughs> no, I really meant, did she hand them anything? Did she give them anything? A no. ticket or any, no. anything? No. So <clears throat> give you a no on that. Two down and eight to go, <clears throat> Mr. Sir. Miss Tackett, could the service that you perform be in any sense relative to agriculture? No. That's three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. John, I'm sorry, but was the question asked whether Miss Tackett had a product? In her yes, the and issue, the answer was, was yes. there a product in connection? And the answer was yes. And there and were some incidental. questions as to what it, whether it was a luxury or utilitarian. Right. And we noted that it was incidental to the service rather than uh, important in and of itself. Thank you, John. Welcome, I'm <laughs> sure. Is it something that uh, both men and women can use, this service of yours? Yes. Uh, are they better off if they have your service? Sometimes. <laughs> I would say this, that con the condition existing that the servant's service is necessary or required, mm -hmm. uh, certainly after it has been given, whoever found it necessary or required it has <laughs> benefited thereby. You yes. just bet. <laughs> uh, is there anything in the service that you do that has to do with uh, destroying anything or destructing anything or finishing off anything? No. No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Niven. Uh, th then it, this service improves the lot of man. Well, let's say it improves uh, the condition uh, of the uh, situation uh, which is, first called for the service. Well, is, is health in any way involved? Ah, that's a critical question. And the answer to that has to be no. That's five <laughs> down and five to go, <laughs> Miss Kilgallen. Uh, Miss Tackett, would you ever carry a tool kit with you when you went to work? Or special equipment? Yeah, I mean, 
John, did you hear the last part or the fudging part of my answer? You do, you do carry some special equipment with you? Yes. Uh, would you ever go inside people's houses? Yes. But you can also work on the outside of their houses. Right. Do you ever work on pipes? No. <laughs> no, that's six down and four to go, Mr. Sir. Uh, you never work on pipes, but might you work on some other installation in the house? Yes. Could there be any wires connected with the work that you do? No. No. Seven down and three to go, Miss Francis. Uh, do you... <laughs> do you have anything to do with discovering something? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Eight down and two to go, Mr. Divot. No, I was thinking of a... Uh, is, is life of any sort involved in this? No. Nine down and one to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, do you have to have... Do you have to have some sort of mechanical knowledge? Yes. A small, small, a small amount, Dorothy. Do you have anything to do with anything that is growing or supposed to grow? No. no. Gee, that was funny because Dorothy came so <coughs> close to it with the inside and the outside. You work on both sides. Now, if you're not a plumber... Painter? Painter is right. You were within an eighth of it. One more question and you'd have gotten it. Because Miss Tackett is, is a, a house painter. And she has a wonderful little card that has, have brush, will travel. <laughs> have brush, will paint. Have brush, will paint, pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> I knocked that one out, didn't I? Oh my, does interiors, exteriors, roofs, gutters, runners, all kinds of things. Does it very well, been doing it for quite some time. And makes the general terrain of Kansas look very gay and splashing and that sort of thing, summer, winter, and spring. So there you are. And thank you very much, ma'am. You've been a wonderful much. guest. Will you say good night? And now we meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment. But first, here is a message from our sponsor. Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which my friends on the panel are blindfolded. The blindfolds on in place, panel? Yes. Yeah. yes. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You'll ask one question at a time in turn, moving clockwise. And let's begin it with um, Dorothy Kilgallen. Um, are you going to open in New York City in anything, either in the flesh or on celluloid, during the next week? Uh, we? Oui. Mr. Sir? Would it be uh, possibly in a motion picture? Mm, oui. Oui? Miss Francis? Oui! <laughs> <laughs> Is the picture one of the enormous spectacular type pictures that are being shown? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I would think so. Actually, Miss Arlene, this is not sent in, in any critical sense at all, but uh, it is more or less the habit, you know, to make every one of them the best, biggest and the best, etc. so we don't want to mislead you. It's one, a picture playing, you know, prominently, we'll tell you that. Miss Kilgallen? Uh, John, just to, to clarify it for the rest of us, uh, w would you say whether it was large screen uh, and color as opposed to small or regular screen and black and white, because that would make a great deal of difference next week? Well, actually, that's a very, those are both very good questions, and when it gets around to your turn, you may ask them. <laughs> Let me have just a small conference. <laughs> John is having the picture run in his ear. <laughs> I wouldn't tell them that much if I were you. All right, panel, you may uh, go forward, if you will. 
David. Mr. Nevins. Who is it? It's you, David. David. It's you, oh. David. Um, judging by the whistles when you came on and the muttering that went on when John whispered in your ear, you're obviously very beautiful. Mr. Niven, may I say you chiseled that one very expertly. Carry on. I get an extra one, don't I? Yes, you do. That's uh, really a statement. You get a thank you from me, too. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh. Uh, are, are the... the... Uh, advertisements for your film featuring you in a group, <clears throat> in a group rather than with one fellow? <laughs> Would you explain what you meant? Well, sometimes you have two very obvious heads on the big posters, and sometimes oh, you I have... I was afraid you were going to say on one person. That would really have been out of that. <laughs> I think we see what you're getting at. You mean, is this a multi-star picture? Yes, that's what I I'm would say that's a fair... Yes. We. 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 Miss Kilgallen? I will now ask my question. <laughs> Is this picture in regular size screen and black and white? No. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Lordy. Does this picture have anything to do with the atomic destruction of the entire no, world? No, Bennett, that's why I asked the question. Excuse me. Well, I'd like to know anyhow, Dorothy. I'm sorry. It has, it has nothing to do with the destruction of the world by atomic dust. No. That's two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Oh. I've been away. Has Solomon and Sheba opened? No. <laughs> <laughs> is it then is that it? Is I think that you, it? Yeah, you can still ask your question, Arlene. Uh well, how do I if it is Solomon and Sheba. All right, no, it's anybody. <laughs> no. That's three down and seven to go, <laughs> Mr. Nevin. Is it a uh, is the theme of your picture, a fantasy. We. Oui. Oh, you know who it is, I David. Think, say, it. say it, David. Is it, is it a uh, journey to the center of the earth? That's oh, right. Maureen, Maureen O'Hara. No, Arlene Dock. the picture, didn't you, Dorothy? Of course, I loved it already. <laughs> what made you think? Who'd David, you you've got me all mixed up. <laughs> I'm not going to repeat it. <laughs> That's pretty difficult to get her mixed up. I saw it, and I up. loved it, and I thought you were just marvelous. And oh, that's marvelous. I think Thank it's going you. to win Academy Awards. I really think it's marvelous. Really? I could see it again tonight. My goodness, there goes Fox Stock right up. <laughs> Five times, though. <laughs> 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 No, really, John, if, if I can make one absolutely correct statement this whole evening, I'd like to. Uh, but Miss Dahl is not only beautiful, which I think she's always been in every picture as well as real life, but she's such a marvelous actress in this and so amusing and witty. And James Mason and Pat Boone, well, and I'm glad I came spent. tonight, you know that? <laughs> <laughs> David Niven upsets her already. I can see what's going to happen when James Mason and Pat Boone and Arlene all show up at the same time. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Arlene. We had a wonderful you, time John. having you with Thank us. You. As always, nice to have you with us. <laughs> and we'll be back after this word from our sponsor. Until then, this is John Daly saying good night, Miss Arlene Francis. Good night, Mr. John Daly. Have a lovely. Good night, dear uh, David. A lovely what? Whatever he's <laughs> whatever he's going to do oh, on I his see. trip. Oh, I see. <laughs> good night, dear. Good night, David. And John, uh, please tear up my entire performance tonight, will you? Good night, <laughs> Bennett. Bon voyage, John. Thank you, Bennett and Dorothy. It was a very fine performance. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us on What's My Life. Transportation for contestants on What's My Line is arranged by United Airlines. What's My Line is a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Totten.